Okay, my name is Hoyne, I'm a consultant psychiatrist and editor of Global Psychiatry Archives and today we continue in our series Mental Health Explained. So I'd like to talk about carbamazepine. Carbamazepine is an anti-epileptic and uh, has been very often used for severe pain, um, neuropathic pain. But uh, today I talk about the psychiatric indications and when you listen to the whole of this, you will have a decent understanding of carbamazepine in mental health. Right, usually carbamazepine, as many antiepileptics, are used to as mood stabilizers and anti-manic medication. So I told before on some occasions that uh, against mania and as a mood stabilizer, you have lithium, antiepileptics, and antipsychotics. Usually, um, carbamazepine is a quite old medication. It's also been used against depressive episodes in combination with antidepressants or in combination with lithium. But, however, this is a bit unusual. Uh, it has been used as a mood stabilizer on the long term. Um, as usual, many of these mode of action and how it works is not really clear. It has some effects on the sodium and calcium channels and uh, it has some effects on GABA receptors, glutamate receptors, and in some parts of the intracellular signaling pathways. However, if that's an epiphenomenon phenomenon of uh, the effects, or if it's a real in the path of the effect or cause of the effect, nobody really knows. Usually, um, the pharmacokinetics as many things comes in waves. So there's a peak plasma concentration after four to eight hours, sometimes a bit later. The plasma half-life is 18 to 55 hours. And um, there's one something unusual uh, because carbamazepine induces the liver, it induces its own metabolism and reduces the half-life again. So sometimes, you know, you can then or you have, you have then to increase the medication dosage just to keep the levels. Anyway, um, it interacts, as many, uh, many drugs interact with uh, plasma levels of other medications, which are usually metabolized in the liver. So the liver has some uh, limits of what, how much of medication it can metabolize. And if, there's a, uh, if they need the same metabolism and pathways, sometimes they can block each other. Right, these are benzos, uh, tricyclics, other anticonvulsals, some contraceptives and thyroid hormones. And some medication can increase the carbamazepine, which are erythromycin, calcium channel blockers, and uh, nimodipine, nifidipine might not, but it might be veratramil, diltiazem, which is something I'm not really aware how it's treated. However, um, the effects of or the serum concentrations can also be increased by SSIs, which is a bit of a problem in psychiatry because we prescribe SSIs very frequently in depression, especially in depression um, when there's mania about and when there's suicidality because SSIs are relatively safe. Right, um, there are plenty of side effects from this medication and uh, they might have uh, antidiuretic effects leading to hyponatremia and uh, this might be uh, sometimes coming up delayed. Um, thyroxine levels might be infected, free cortisol might be affected, there is acranotrizosis, aplastic anemia, hepatic failure, dermatitis or even Stevens-Johnson syndrome where the, um, the skin more or less uh, is exfoliated or is peeled off in a, a massive way. Pancreatitis can be a problem. Um, blood changes can be a problem. Liver failure can be a problem, as I said before. And sometimes you can uh, even cause mania or psychosis, but that's quite rare. You can have renal failure oliguria, hematuria, and proteinuria, which usually means olig, 
it's rare, urea means urine, hem, hemat urea means blood in the urine, and proteinuria means protein in the urine. One, one uh, big problem is that there's big toxicity uh, for overdose. Um, early signs are dizziness, ataxia, sedation, double vision, diplopia, diplopia double vision, and uh, sometimes stupor and coma. It can be fatal if more than three, jam, three grams of um, carbamazepine are injected, uh, ingested um, and uh, symptoms are also nystagmus, ophthalmoplegia, cerebellar. So lots of neurological symptoms, including some of the ones which affect the um, cerebellum. Right, you have uh, convulsions, even um, because it's very a strong sedative, it can have respiratory, respiratory depression, cardiac problems, gastrointestinal in upset and antihilinergic symptoms, which might affect the, the heart. Um, if there is a severe overdose, you have to go to A&E or the patient has to go to A&E and there might be the need to monitor the heart, symptomatic treatment and sometimes gastric lavage to get the rest of the uh, rest of the tablets out of the stomach or hemodialysis where the where one tries to wash the medication out of the bloods right um carbamazepine is quite an old medication uh, older than whatever 30 40 years and there's lots of variations of tablets they are uh, liquids suppositories uh, suppositories which are, sorry, I can't, this is one of the things, I can't pronounce things which are the same in, in German and English, because then I fall back into the German uh, pronunciation sometimes. Sorry for that. Anyway, uh, modified release uh, tablets, capsules, and uh, generic tablet capsules. Right, so what do you do when you start with carbamazepine, and this is a bit boring because it's usually what you do in all the medications. You take a full history, a physical examination, check the liver, liver function test, have an ECG and check the weight. You start with the medication low, then increase slowly and uh, depends a little bit how slow you can afford. If it's severe mania, you can't wait for the blood levels to go up slowly. So sometimes you go, go high quite quickly, but that usually should be then done in the hospital. Um, the maintenance dosage of carbamazepine is about 1,000 milligrams per day. It can be lower, it can be higher. Usually, if the effects are good, then you just leave it. If you need more medication or if you, the mania is not treated well, then uh, so be it. You have to go higher. However, one must say that uh, for, ma for mania, this is a quite rare indication and I would usually use it for patients who have experience with carbamazepine because they're older and have had this at times when other antipsychotics or other um, antiepileptics weren't available. You check for liver function, a full blood count over uh, the time when the medication is given and then when the medication is stable you can go to modified release versions. Um, sometimes when patients don't uh, are older or disabled or mentally cognitive impaired, then you can uh, make sure that you check the medications in the blood a bit more often to make sure um, that you don't oversee any possible side effects. And uh, be careful about uh, combination with lithium because if there's uh, uh, problems with the kidney or liver, then the blood levels might increase and lithium is very um, vulnerable to cause or as a factor of causing confusion. So, and then you don't know which one of, the, one of the medications causes confusion, which sometimes doesn't help if you need the medication. Right, okay, so you have to have other medications checked, check the interactions. Um, sadly, you can't check many medications in the bloods. Um, there are not always tests available and some of them are not reliable and some are extremely expensive to do. So you have to, um, usually I would ex uh, expect when you look at medication of a patient that you look at the BNF, British National Formula, or other, um, other whatever publications 
to look at interactions. So a pharmacist should also use uh, have the information about that. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for your interest. And uh, I hope you have learned a little bit, even though it's a bit special. Um, we don't want it to make it too easy um, that you can continue uh, seeing our other videos, which possibly all taken together will give you some good information about mental health and its treatment. Okay, thanks for your interest and have a good night.